Can you hear it now? Can you hear me now? How you doing, Art? Good, good. All right, I'm going to go get my picture taken. As Terry. And welcome to First Meridian Heights on this beautiful Sunday morning as we celebrate Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church. So for all of you uh, who are worshiping with us live on Facebook, uh, a very good morning to you. I hope you get a chance to go outside at some point today. For those of you in your cars, hopefully listening on FM radio, please wave out your window so that we know you can hear us. Yay! If you happen to have streamer sticks, uh, wave those out your window too. Excellent. Good job, good job. A lot of our kids and youth and college students should have those. Um, so it is wonderful to be together. Uh, we will share joys and concerns in just a little while. Um, if you know my cell phone number, you can text me your joys and concerns. If uh, you know my email address, well, I'll give you my email address, kim at fmhpc.org. Uh, or um, we are doing comments on Facebook. Yes, Bruce? Yes. So you can also put your sh sh joys and concerns in the uh, Facebook comments. Um, a couple of announcements. One is that in two weeks on um, June, June 14th, is that right? Uh, yes, June 14th, Sunday, June 14th. I'm looking for people who know the calendar. Uh, we are having a congregational meeting to elect new elders and deacons, and we will do that through Zoom, and we will send out information about the electronic uh, congregational meeting. So watch for an email about that. That is in two Sundays. It'll be following worship. Um, also, today we are handing out Reggie's famous and delicious uh, cinnamon rolls and um, what we will do just wait for instructions at the end of worship uh, like this row will be invited to go first you'll pick up they'll, they'll be handed a bag of cinnamon rolls uh, it'll work follow the directions it'll be great 
Um, and those of you at home, it's not too late to send one over here, someone over here to pick up some cinnamon rolls. Uh, so we still have people arriving, and um, we want to wave to them as they come. All right. Are there any other announcements this morning that I am forgetting from folks around here? I want to give a huge, huge, huge thank you to Bruce White and Ben Moy and Jonathan Green for getting all the sound and video figured out for today. Also, a very hearty welcome back to our own Art, who is here, Cantrell, playing the uh, keyboard. Woo -woo -woo. Also, uh, thank you to Lindsay, who has been with us, helping us worship all this time. But she's brought another family member along. Our own Eric Moy is singing for us with us today as well. Also, a special thanks to Ben. Uh, he created the recording when we sing Let Every Christian Pray that has some voices in it. Only a few of you participated, but that's okay. Again, welcome. Oh, I also want to thank Cindy Fenstermaker. Uh, I mean, sorry, Cindy Halsmer. <laughs> you know, whatever, whoever you are, who um, had the, uh, the design and the, and the uh, effort of decorating the area for Pentecost. So we thank you for Cindy for her hard work in decorations as well. Woo! I hope I haven't forgotten anybody. We know that this is a tough time in our country. In our own city, downtown, there has been a lot of violence and demonstrations following the death of jo the murder of George Floyd. It's a hard morning to come and celebrate with fire, no less. And yet, friends, that is exactly what we do. We come to celebrate the gift of God's Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church because especially in the midst of violence and unrest and brokenness, that is when we need the Holy Spirit the most. And so I encourage you, friends, to remember this Pentecost 2020. Uh, 2020 has been an interesting year so far. I'm sure you will agree. Uh, so let's remember this Pentecost when we gathered here outside in the beautiful sunshine in the midst of a pandemic while there are buildings and police cars and things burning in Minneapolis and Chicago and there were incidents here and all over the country. Let's remember that we are a people of hope and a people of faith. And we believe that God's Holy Spirit will set things right. And so we have gathered here to breathe in the Holy Spirit in the midst of all the chaos. Because it is our God who creates life out of chaos. So let's join together in the call to worship. Uh, those of you who have bulletins it, and also those at home with the slides, you all repeat the bolded parts or say the bolded parts. In those days, says the Lord, after Jesus rose from the dead, in those anxious, fearful days, God exhaled the Holy Spirit. And the disciples released their fear. And the birth cry came in so many languages. And everyone heard and understood. In those days, the church was born out of fear and confusion and grief. With joy and awe, they prepared to be born. The church was born. Happy birthday, church. <laughs> Happy birthday, church. And now we'll sing, Let Every Christian Pray. Um, I trust, will they be able to hear the music over the radio? Okay, perfect. Sing along, and the um, words are on the back of your bulletin, or they're on your screen if you're at home.
Amen. And now, trusting in God's grace, let us confess our, confess our sins with humble hearts. In your bulletin, this is columns. So you go down the left side and then down the right side. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we hurt, we hoard, we worry, we judge, we complain, we ignore, we shut down, we strike back, we blame, we hate. We stay silent. Forgive us, O oh God. Through your Holy Spirit, kindle in us kindness, generosity, trust, compassion, gratitude, attentiveness, openness, forgiveness, humility, love, and courage. Make us new, we pray, and make us whole. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Everyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life is gone, and a new life has begun. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you. Now share the peace of Christ with one another, either at home with those worshiping with you, or wave to each other in your cars, uh, shake a little flame stick, and share the gift of peace. Okay, that's perfect.
people. I think the award for youngest person out here is little infant Theo Harkness. Um, Theo Harkness is down that way. And how many months? Four months? Is that right? Four months old, Theo? Almost five months old. Yep, because there's grandma and grandpa right there. So uh, honk down there, Harkness family, Megan and Brock and Theo. Yeah, Theo. Oh, he's right there. They got out. Yay! Oh, she's holding him up. Look! <laughs> Yay! Poor baby Theo has not been able to greet his public because of the pandemic. They have been locked inside. So here she comes showing the baby. Thank you, Megan. Keep walking. You just share that baby. So cute. That is Theo. Uh, that is the grandbaby of Kate and John Fox. Mom is Megan Fox Harkness right there. Dad is Brock. Baby Theo, thank you for joining us. Yeah. The parading of the Theo, absolutely. All right, and now it is time for the children's message. Yeah? Do I have some kids here? And I hope I have some kids watching at home. So wave to me so I can see where you are. I got some college students up there. Did you get a look at those college students <laughs> coming out of their uh, sunroofs? That's good. We're glad to have that. So, kids, today is Pentecost Sunday, and we are celebrating ugh, the gift of God's Holy Spirit um, to the church. And where we find that is in Acts chapter 2, which we're going to read in just a few minutes. Now, one of the things that you may, uh, hopefully, everyone got um, a Pentecost packet at home uh, uh, delivered to you. If not, go look on your front porch. Um, and you potentially, can you see that? I didn't make a slide, sorry. You potentially, hopefully, got a coloring sheet that looks like this. Can you see that? So did anybody, there were instructions at the bottom. It said, who is this woman in the picture? It said, read Acts 1, 12 through 14 for the answer. Did anybody have a chance to do that? Anyone? Anyone? Well, okay, we'll do it real quick. Um, all right, so this is before Pentecost. And the, what are we looking for? We're trying to figure out who that woman was. Usually, you know, we think about in Bible times, the men kind of hanging out together, Jesus' disciples, and that they were the ones there for Pentecost. But there's this woman in the picture. Yeah? So what does it say in Acts 1, 12 through 14? So after Jesus had ascended into heaven, then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James, that's a different Judas, all of these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. So how many of you knew that Mary was there on Pentecost? Jesus' mother, Mary. Raise your hand if you already knew that. Ra oh, we got a few right here. So this coloring page is a surprise for some people because not everybody reads Acts 1. We usually just read Acts 2. So what I want you kids to remember is I want you to think about how hard things had been for Mary. Mary had had a hard life. She, um, starting from the very beginning, you know, when she had to ride on that donkey when she was nine months pregnant and had to take that trip all the way uh, to Bethlehem. And then as her son left home and as he got arrested and as he was, um, was put to death on the cross, think about her as a mother. Her heart was breaking. And you know, she could have gone home and stayed there. 
She could have said, I'm done with this church business. I don't want to be with the disciples. My son is God. My, my son is gone. My heart is broken. And I know, kids, I know you can understand being heartbroken and being sad. Some of you who ha have had grandparents die, you've had friends move away, you understand. Um, you've had your parents divorce and not being able to live with both parents, and you, you've been heartbroken. I know you have. So you understand how Mary was feeling. But here's what we want to learn from Mary on Pentecost. She kept trying. She kept going to hang out with the people of faith. She kept coming to worship and pray and be with them because she trusted that God was going to do something new. So Mary, Jesus' mother, is the only person who was there for the birth of Jesus and the birth of the church. She knew that God had done something special by sending Jesus, and so she trusted God to start something fantastic and new. And that's exactly what happened on Pentecost when God gave them the gift of the Holy Spirit. So if you are ever feeling sad, if you are feeling brokenhearted, or you know someone who is, remember Mary and how even though she was grieving and she was sad and she was afraid, where did she go hang out? With church people, with the disciples, with people of faith. And together they waited. They waited for God to send help. Can you remember that for me? Wave a, wave a stick if you'll remember that for me. With me. Remember that with me. We all need to remember it. And um, kids, will you, we'll pray a little bit. You Just repeat what I say to pray. Loving God, sometimes we're heartbroken. Sometimes we're scared. Remind us that you love us and that we should wait with people of faith for your help. Amen. Thank you all, kids. We appreciate it. And at home, kids, um, hopefully you've got some red, something red to wave or some flame sticks too. Um, now it is time to share our joys and concerns. <laughs> So, this is not so good for writing on, is it? That's okay. So we have several joys this morning already. The first joy is that the food pantry is going to reopen on Saturday, June 6th. Yay! Applause for that. We are very grateful for that. And grateful for our uh, pantry team that um, is going to help make that happen with Northwood. Also another joy, this comes from Katie Marlowe. Thanks to Mark, Deborah, Linda, Dave, Judy, Cindy, John, Greg, Joe, excuse me, Ruth, and John, who spread the most ginormous pile of wood chips ever throughout the garden. It looks amazing and ready to produce fresh, uh, fresh food for the food pantry. Um, sorry, with grateful hearts we say... Praise God. And for the pantry reopening on June 6th, with grateful hearts, we say, praise God. Um, from Jessica Halsmer, Sandy and I have a joy. They want to thank the deacons for the, the gift card and nice note. So the deacons send out a card, um, a note, and gift cards to our college students. And uh, Sandy and Jessica are saying thank you. With grateful hearts, we say, praise God. From Sue, um, let me save that one. From Emily Paget, joy, thank you to this congregation for support this college season and the deacon's gift. With grateful hearts, we say, praise God. And another joy, we are going back to college this fall. Uh, concern, it stays that way. Okay, so right now, uh, I know at least Emily's going back to Rose Holman, Katie's going back to Franklin, I mean to, um, sorry, St. Louis University in, in um, you know, St. Louis. <laughs> uh, with grateful hearts we say, praise God. Uh, from Katie England, a joy for her dad's 
uh, birthday on Tuesday. Rick Beam's birthday is Tuesday. Happy birthday to Rick. With grateful hearts, we say, praise God. Um, we have a joy from Skip Kappas. About a month ago, we prayed for Mrs. Kathy, App Kathy Apple, a nurse, mother, and wife who was suffering from COVID-19. She was so serious that she was on a ventilator for many days. She was finally removed from the ventilator and had assisted breathing through a tracheotomy. From that point, she improved rapidly and is now recovering at home. Long recovery, but certainly on the way. Uh, it is a joy. So for the recovery of Mrs. Kathy Apple, uh, with grateful hearts we say, praise God. And we have a concern from Susan Alvarez. A good friend, Daryl, lost her job um, a week before her 70th birthday. So we pray for Daryl, who has lost her job. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. And a joy. Susan Alvarez's mom, Mary Lee, her birthday is today, and she is 97 years old. Praise God for that. Applause, applause. Happy birthday, Mary Lee. With grateful hearts, we say, praise God. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Wow, congratulations. Lindsay Moy Bernhardt has a new job. She will be heading up the Education de Outreach Department, sorry, Education Outreach Program at the Indianapolis Opera. Congratulations. Uh-huh, that is fantastic. In the middle of a pandemic, she scores a new job. Yay. With grateful hearts, we say, praise God. Eric Moy says it is a joy to see everyone in person. With grateful, well, almost everyone, lots of, every, lots of ones, with grateful hearts we say, praise God. Also a concern from, Joe, uh, from Greg Padgett, his father Joe is in rehabilitation after a hip surgery. He is 92 and is getting discouraged and still not able to see his family. So uh, prayers for Greg Padgett's uh, father, Joe. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. I want to make sure I haven't missed any. Do you have any over there? Ooh. Are there any out here that um, you're unable to text or email? Families, how much time is left of school? Two more days of school for IPS students. With grateful hearts, the kids and parents say? Absolutely. And parents, you did it. You almost made it. You did a good job. We love you, and we're with you, and we're praying for your recovery after this. <laughs> there will be healing. Any other prayers? So let's bow our heads together. Eternal God, on this Pentecost Sunday, we give you thanks for the promise that we are not alone, that you have sent your Holy Spirit to dwell with us, to teach us, to guide us, to strengthen us, to transform us, kick us in the rear when we need it, to show us the way to go when we get lost, to challenge us, and to keep us close to you. God, we almost have no words for what is happening in our country right now. We're brokenhearted. We're brokenhearted at senseless, senseless death, the murder of someone in police custody. We're brokenhearted at the destruction in so many cities, the violence turned toward police officers who are trying to protect others. 
We are brokenhearted at the systemic racism in our country that is still here, still being revealed again and again through what's happening with the virus, with so many people of color dying from the virus, so many more than people who are not uh, black or brown. And God, what is happening now still with innocent black men being killed for trying while trying to live. God, we're brokenhearted to see people coming from other communities to disrupt uh, peaceful protests. And we pray, oh God, for peace. We pray for protesters to be in front of their emotions and to observe the laws. We pray for our leaders to hear and God, we pray that you would give all of us as the faith community ears to hear. Help us hear our brothers and sisters who live with prejudice and bigotry every day. Help us hear those who are struggling, who are poor, who are homeless, who are hungry. Help us hear those who live in the inner cities, whose homes and neighborhoods are being destroyed. And God, especially help us hear you. Help us hear your Holy Spirit, your voice speaking to us. God, we need you to light our hearts and minds on fire. Show us, oh God, how to burn with passion and justice and love for you. God, we bring all of those that we love, those we know, those we don't, who are sick, who are grieving, who are unemployed. And at the same time, we bring you, oh God, our joys and our celebrations for all the good news that we have shared and ask that you would send your spirit to comfort and guide those in need. God, look at us. We are your church. We want to be your church. Like on Pentecost, we want to be together in the same place so that we might receive your spirit. We can't wait to be together, and yet, oh God, we are learning new things. You are teaching us to be the church in new ways, and for that we are grateful. And we ask that you would continue to teach us, continue to show us new ways to bring justice and peace to our own communities and to serve all of your children. God, we are so, so grateful for this wonderful day, for sunshine, for family and friends in the faith, for streamers and balloons, for our older folks and our little bitty folks. God, thank you so much for this opportunity to gather together here at the church and through Facebook, that all together we can worship as one family of faith. We're so glad to see each other, God. And we pray that you would also, in this moment, help us to see you and to follow. And now hear us as we join our voices together in the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in singing ancient words. Holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with God's own heart. Oh, let the ancient words impart. Words of life, words of hope, give us strength, help us cope. In this world where we roam, ancient
ancient words will guide us home. Ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words impart. As we read our scripture this morning, I encourage those of you with bubbles or with um, flame sticks or those of you who are near, and there's bubbles here if you want to pass them out, that when we hear about the fire, rave your flame sticks, and if you hear, when we hear the wind, blow some bubbles, wave some bubbles. You can jump out of your car if you want. Um, It is very nice out mind if I give you your iPad? Do you mind it? I don't want to say it's going to fall off. Thank you very, very much. Huh? I know you do. Don't lose it. All right. So we are reading Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 13. Is everybody ready? Do any bubble blowers ready? Oh, good. Oh, here's some. You want some? Okay. Let's listen to God's word for us here in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, on Facebook and here. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a mighty wind. (laughs) The bubbles are good? (laughs) You want to show the bubbles? (laughs) No? (laughs) Okay. Okay. Whoa. It's good. And suddenly there was the rush of a mighty wind. Sorry. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them. There you go. And rested on each one of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this time, the the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who, who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us In our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, way back in 2006, which was kind of a long time ago, I was on a planning team for the Montreat Youth Conference. Montreat, North Carolina, there's a college there and a Presbyterian Conference Center. And um, they do youth conferences every summer. They have for generations, except not in person this summer. Um, And the way it works is there are usually six weeks of conferences and they're broken into two week blocks. And there's a planning team that starts working on that conference, that two week block, two different conferences, and, but with the same theme and all the same leadership, two years ahead of time. So we started gathering in, 2000, I was asked in 2006, and we started meeting in 2007 for the 2009 Youth Conference. And one of the things you do when you're on the planning team is you try to come up, well, that's helpful. You can try to, I don't need any of that. 
um, you try to come up with a theme for the youth conference. And there's all kinds of themes, and sometimes it's um, a Bible verse, and sometimes, you know, it's about making peace and growing in God. There's lots of tree themes, you know. We're growing in God, and we're bearing fruit. <laughs> and um, we got there. It's okay, I got it. So we went, you have to go to Montreal as a group. Everybody, you know, comes in, and um, we sit around, and we talk about possible themes. And so the thing about these um, planning teams is they are half adults and half high school students. That is the way Montreat does it. They're preparing leaders for the future. And so when we gathered as planning teams, there were, ha there were the same number of youth as there were adults there. And what was so fascinating back in 2007 was that those youth had come prepared. They had a theme in mind. It was like no theme Montreat had ever used before. It wasn't a Bible verse. It wasn't some little uplifting tidbit, you know, that you could remember all summer long. And it wasn't direction like grow in faith, love, you know, go out and love and, and be the church. The theme was world on fire. That's what the high school youth in 2007 wanted the theme for the 2009 youth conference to be, world on fire. Now, you may think, ha, huh, they had no idea, did they? They had no idea. But friends, in April of 2007, that was when the shooting occurred at Virginia Tech. And 33 students and teachers were killed. And later in 2007, Michael Cho, thank you. <laughs> Michael Cho was outside a, um, a liquor store in La, La Habra, uh, California, and he had a tire iron. And he was shot 11 times by police officers and killed. That was in 2007. Friends, our world was on fire, has been on fire for a long, long time, maybe always. Remember Cain and Abel? Remember? And so these kids, though, they were becoming more aware of climate change, and they were more aware of school shootings, and they were aware, once we got to 2008 and we were still meeting, they were aware of the financial crisis and some of their parents had lost their jobs and some of them had had to move out of houses and into apartments. These youth were coming to our meetings and telling us, the adults, the world is on fire. And those of us on the planning team, they brought us around pretty quickly. We were on board with it. Again, it was not like any um, theme that had ever been done. It sounded depressing, it sounded a little bit ominous, and it certainly didn't sound like good news, at least not immediately. And then it was time for the retreat when you bring in the leadership, the preachers and the speakers and the musicians. They're all chosen later after the planning team has everything set up. But it's those leaders, the preachers and the teachers and the, and the leaders, all that, they're the ones who kind of get together and decide what passages of scripture and what the themes are going to be for each day because it's a five, six-day conference of youth at that conference center. So I tell you all this because it, I still remember it. That we had a day of meetings and getting together, and then it was time for the leadership group. Remember, this is a group of new people in our group that had been meeting for, you know, over a year already. And they bring their ideas for what we're going to do in 2009 during the summer uh, youth conference. And they prettied it up. They had these scripture verses about, um, oh, the, oh, yes, the burning bush. I mean, that was good. And we ended up using the burning bush. But nothing, nothing in the themes that they had developed talked about our world being on fire. These were these were Presbyterian ministers, grown-ups, people who should have known better. They didn't think that it was the right place, a youth conference, to talk about the world being on fire. And you should have seen those high school youth. Once they heard the presentation, they were respectful. 
but some of them were in tears. And the leadership had to start over. They had to back up and they had to listen. They had, and the, the thing about Montreat is this was a diverse group of youth. They try as hard as they can, girls, boys, black, white, Asian, a whole mixture. And some of them were in tears as they looked at the leadership of their churches, these pastors and music leaders, and they said, you didn't hear us. Our world is on fire. Our families are falling apart. Our parents have lost their jobs. We've lost our homes, some of us. We're scared at school. We have to do, uh, we have to rehearse what happens if a shooter comes. And this was North Carolina. Some of them knew people who went to Virginia Tech. Friends, this was a long time ago. This was 2008 and then into 2009. And grown-ups, we were having a hard time hearing that our kids knew it before we did. The world was on fire. They knew about climate. They knew about gun violence. And they paid better attention to racism in their schools and online. They were there way before we were on Facebook, and now they've left Facebook because we're there, right? And they're on Instagram and Snapchat, Snapchat and Snapchat and TikTok. But they knew it before we did. And I say that just because it's really hard this morning that the world is on fire the way it is. And I tell you this, this story about these kids because it actually gives me hope, and I hope it gives you hope. Because there's a generation, and I'm hoping that we are, it's not too late for us, <laughs> who've been paying attention, who have been listening, and who are willing to say, the world is on fire. Now let's talk about it at youth camp. Let's talk about it at church camp. Let's sing about God's love while we talk about the world being on fire. Let's read scripture and talk about God calling Moses through the burning bush while we talk about gun violence and divorce and teen suicide. They wanted to talk about the hard stuff, and they wanted to do it there at Montreat with people of faith because they had faith that God was going to send God's spirit and bring hope and transformation and change. Friends, we ended that conference that Friday night with Pentecost. That was, of course, the theme. Because those kids, and they were driving it the whole time, they told the leadership, you have to start with the world on fire and then move to the gift of the Spirit and God setting us on fire setting us on fire to go set the world on fire with God's love. Fight fire with fire, they told us. Wow. These, are, these kids are grown now, right? That was 11, 12 years ago. Fight fire with fire. The fire of God's love is the only thing that will drive back the fire of hatred and prejudice bigotry, and all the rest. And our love for God's planet, that also can set us on fire to love God's planet and to try to push back the damages caused by climate change. Friends, it's a hopeful story. When we know that the word world is on fire and we know where to go to talk about it, meaning here, with people of faith, when we gather together in one place, either literally or figuratively, and that one place is faith and a willingness to be open to God's spirit, that is when God is faithful and God sends God's Holy Spirit to transform hearts and lives and show us how to be the church. I want to share one more thing with you. 
Christianity Today published um, an article just a couple days ago. And it is about George Floyd and that he left a gospel legacy in Houston, Texas. I hadn't heard this on the news. I hadn't seen it anywhere online until I finally landed on this article. But George Floyd grew up in the third ward in Houston, which is a tradi traditionally African-American community that is incredibly impoverished with a lot of gang violence. And George Floyd grew up there, and he had spent much of his life involved in the church, expanding church programs, and trying to do this. This is a quote. He would say things to young men, and he would reference that God trumps street culture. He would tell young men, put down your guns and have Jesus instead of the streets. He was supposed to go back to the Third Ward. He was just visiting Indiana, uh, uh, Minneapolis or was there for a while visiting family. I'm not sure. But they called him Big Floyd. And sometimes they called him Big Floyd for God. And the prayers of lament from his fellow Christians and those who serve impoverished youth in Houston have been profound. They talk about his heart and that his heart was radically changed by the gospel and he used and he worked with God to change the third ward and to change others' hearts. He would gather kids for church. He would talk to them. He would help them. I tell you that again as a story of hope. Because, friends, George Floyd grew up in one of the poorest neighborhoods in the United States. And his story, no, it did not end the way it should. It ended in tragedy and injustice. But in the meantime, God used him to bring justice and light and hope to impoverished teenagers, to kids who were in gangs that he helped get out of those gangs. Friends, that is hopeful because if the Holy Spirit is moving in the third ward in Houston, then surely God and the Holy Spirit are moving here among us and can move in Indianapolis and anywhere else. We should grieve the loss of George Floyd as the loss of a Christian brother who served God faithfully and well. But in our grieving of him, we should also be inspired by him and the promise that the Holy Spirit works in chaos and despair and brokenness and brings new life and hope. Friends, we're the church. It's what we've got. We've got the Holy Spirit, an amazing gift. Let us be open and let us follow. Amen. Oh, sorry. Are you ready?
passion for your purity, Holy Spirit, breathe new life in me. creation's birth, giving life to all that God has made. Show your power once again on earth, cause your church to hunger for your way. So as we pause for the offering, I realize I forgot to say something that blew away. Um, and I'm going to say it now because I think it's important. Sorry. Um, Austin Channing Brown is an African-American author, and she works, she's a leading voice on racial justice. And she wrote an article um, that has been uh, spread around about um, questions that we should all be asking ourselves. And one of the things she addresses is the looting and the fires. And what she says is that as we become more concerned, we, middle class, um, mostly white people, about the looting and the fires. She said, I need you to realize that the world is always on fire for us. Always. That was sort of an important point that I was supposed to make. So for our African American brothers and sisters, the world is always on fire, she says. Always. And you can put together what that all means. But friends, obviously, as we talk about the world being on fire, for thus, those of us who are not victims of racism and bigotry and violence from police officers, the world being on fire is sort of out here, you know? But for our brothers and sisters who have brown or black skin, 
The fire burns in their lives every day. And so with the gift of God's Holy Spirit, we commit ourselves to helping quench that fire, putting out that fire, finally, for people of color, for our brothers and sisters who deserve to breathe God's Spirit, but not feel like the world is burning them up. So, with gratitude for all that God has given us, we are going to take a moment to give our tithes and offerings, which means either um, just say thank you to God as you think about giving online or mailing in a check. I do want to thank everyone for still supporting the church. But also, maybe just say out loud something that you are grateful for in this moment. The church. Yay. Friends, we are grateful to God, and so we worship God with our gratitude as well as our offerings. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all people here below. Praise Holy Spirit evermore. Praise triune God whom we Let's pray. Loving God, thank you, thank you, thank you for the gift of your spirit, the gift of your church, the gift of friends and family. And thank you, O oh God, for granting us the gift of purpose. As we go from here, light our hearts on fire with your love as we continue to give thanks and praise to you and committing our lives to your justice and peace. Amen. You all probably know this, and if you're all here with your windows down, I would like to be able to hear you. Sing it with me. Every time I feel the Spirit. time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Up on the mountain, when my Lord spoke, out of God's mouth came fire and smoke. Looked all around me, it looked so fine, till I asked my Lord if all was mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. The Jordan River is chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There is but one train on this track it runs to heaven and it comes right back every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray I will pray I will pray I will pray. Amen. Amen. Ha! I didn't see any fault. Thank 
you everyone for joining us here or on Facebook. Thank you to the team up here for all of their hard work, for the beautiful music. Thank you. Thank you, Art. Art Cantrell, everybody. Art Cantrell. woo Art, we are so glad to have you back. And we want to say a special thank you to Reggie Moore because we're about to get some cinnamon rolls. Woohoo! So now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in God's spirit, be safe, and love and serve God. Amen.